We're going to do some overreaction Monday. Some players that are tend to are, are struggling a little bit that you might be some uh, concerns have some concerns with, and the Kansas City Chiefs are the most alarming thing right now for fantasy managers because Mahomes bad game against the Broncos. His two top receivers bad games against the Broncos. So Chris, I'll give you the first word. We have a Chiefs problem with Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, and Travis Kelsey moving forward. I mean, it would have been an overreaction maybe in week seven. It's an overreaction for the season. Offense struck. But, yeah, they've been mediocre for half the season now. They're 20th in, in air yards per attempt since week seven. We've seen teams try to take away and be mostly successful at taking away the deep ball, and it's really caused this offense to bog down outside of the one game against the Raiders. This has been a pretty mediocre offense for a long time. I think it's 6.3 yards per pass attempt since week seven. Th that's mirroring some larger trends that we're seeing across the NFL passing production has been down largely over the last five to six weeks. The average quarterback is below seven yards per attempt since week seven as well, which is actually pretty stunning. But yeah, I don't I don't know when this... I, I think the Chiefs are going to figure it out. I think they're going to turn it around. I thought that happened in Las against Las Vegas, though. So right now, I'm, I'm really struggling with how I view them. I think there's no way I'm going to go away from Ty Tyreek Hill. There's no way I'm going to go away from Travis Kelsey. There's no way I'm going to go away from Patrick Mahomes. But... That's as much about, you know, not feeling great about other options at those positions as anything else. I, well, I guess that's not fair. Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey are must-start guys no matter what. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, it's really more of an underreaction Monday because I can't bring myself to react to this. They've been bad. If it was other names, I might be at the point to where I'd say, I'm not sure I can start them anymore. But it's not other names. Yeah. It's Patrick Mahomes and it's Travis Kelsey. And Tyree Kill and Kelsey have pretty much done a good job of one of them being good most weeks. We haven't had too many weeks where they've both been bad like this. But I don't like going up against the Raiders this week. Right. I'm probably going to rank all of them in the top five at their position. That's the thing. Yeah. Uh, as Chris said, you know, we thought about this going into the Raiders game. They get the Raiders again. They are at home. So hopefully the uh, the magic works once again in the Las Vegas Raiders are the solution to the Chiefs' problems. James Robinson is a problem for fantasy managers because he is getting benched in favor of not only Carlos Hyde at times, but LaVisca Chenault as well. And so Robinson, he's had some fumble issues the last couple of weeks. We know he's been playing through a heel injury, a knee injury. Uh, is James Robinson still a must-start running back? I don't think that he can be. You look at the last two weeks, 52% and 44% of the snaps. Other than the week he got hurt, that's the least amount we've seen him played, even going back to early in the season when he was splitting with Carlos Hyde, not for punishment purposes. So just the way that this offense functions, as bad as they are and as quick as they are to pull the trigger on pulling James Robinson – He's a borderline number two, but we were talking about Jamal Williams. I'd definitely rather start him this week. Yep, we've got a Titans defense coming off a of bye week, so it could be tough for James Robinson. Hopefully he's healthy, and this is just something that he's working his way through and the fumbles aren't a problem. But like we saw last year, he got hurt the final three games. He wasn't able to play. I just hope he could finish the season strong and maybe make a case for uh, still being the Jaguars' best running back with Travis Etienne coming back next season. Chris, I want to ask you about one final guy here for Overreaction Monday. That's Brandon Ayuk. We thought, okay, no Debo Samuel. This is going to be the Ayuk show. And then Jimmy Garoppolo, he sees Brandon Ayuk wide open, and he doesn't throw to him. Now, George Kittle had a monster game. It's hard to overlook leaning on him. But does Brandon Ayuk still warrant must-start status, even with Debo Samuel not on the field, potentially, in Week 14? Well, you know, I talked about the the passing game production being down across the league. That's really impacted the wide receiver position. We've talked about it a lot over the last few weeks. But, you know, this is not a situation where there are 35 wide receivers that I feel really good about starting every week. There are maybe 20. You know, we talked about Brandon Cooks earlier this uh, earlier in the show, how you don't really trust him anymore. I would probably start Brandon, Brandon Ayuk over him. So you're probably looking at Brandon Ayuk still being in the wide receiver two range. However, what this this week did show for me was it confirmed what I thought before the season, which was that, you know, at least when it comes to George Kittle and Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle is still the go-to guy. That's been the case when he's been on the field for the most part over the last few seasons. And even this season with Debo Samuel being, you know, the best wide receiver in football, arguably, George Kittle has been the number one target guy in about half the games he's played. So I think that'll be the case moving forward. And Brandon Ayuk, even with Debo Samuel out, more like the number two wide receiver for the 49ers. But that should still be enough to make him a lower end wide receiver two for fantasy. And we'll see what happens. Bengals dealing with some injuries in their secondary. Uh, Awuzie, who's been one of their best cornerbacks, uh, banged up in that game against the Chargers. So we'll see if he's able to return. That could help Brandon Ayuk also, clearly, if Debo Samuel does not play in week 14, dealing with that groin injury. Chris, great job. Thanks for being with us here, as always, on FFT.